Hi, roofing professionals, and welcome back to another episode of the Roofing Webmasters podcast. Okay. We hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm Madison. I'm Amberlynn. And uh, today we are here to talk about something that is crucial to your business and hopefully near and dear to your hearts already. Mm -hmm. That is Google reviews. Yay, Google reviews. Mm -hmm. Now, just to side note, we already know that there are a lot of different types of reviews out there. Some of them aren't even called reviews. We have Facebook recommendations. We got Yelp reviews. Mm -hmm. We got Home Advisor. We got the Better Business Bureau. Angie's List. Name them, there's a review for that. <laughs> yes. However, we wanted to set those aside for now, we can talk about those later, mm -hmm. and give Google Reviews the justice that it deserves because, Amberlynn, it is such a humongous part of doing business these days. It is. It is one of the fastest growing review platforms ever. Like, mm -hmm. And because it ties in with Google, because it's from Google, mm -hmm. it can actually do a lot for your business. Mm -hmm. And people just use it more often than, than other platforms. Now, how would you say, how would you describe this? How do Google reviews work? Well, if you recall, in a previous episode, we discussed the Google My Business, which is a knowledge bar kind of graph mm -hmm. that you sometimes see on the right-hand side of your searches. Or searches. The search result. Search, the search results. Page. Yes, yeah. the cert page. That's it. So that is yours to go ahead and create with Google. It's a free mm -hmm. tool. It's awesome. It's so cool. And it has all of your contact info, your business info, posts you can do, mm -hmm. all that. Well, that also provides a review platform for you. That's right. Uh, it's very easy for your clients to get to. And uh, if people want to leave uh, a comment or feedback about your roofing services, it's the easiest place for them to do that. For sure. Yes. Now, Google reviews can do a lot of things for your business. Um, are Google reviews in Berlin yes. good for SEO? <gasps> yes, they are. <laughs> Seriously, yes, they are. Um, it's actually tied into your ranking, your search ranking online. So you have all of your SEO elements you do for your website and your web presence, mm -hmm. and adding that Google review can actually help improve your ranking as well. Mm -hmm. So it works in tandem with all of your efforts. That's right. Like I was saying earlier, it's a very important signal of trustworthiness and that applies both to prospective clients who are thinking about trying out your roofing services for the first time. Right. And that's a big financial decision there of that course. reviews can affect. Um, but also, they're an important indicator of trust for Google as well. Google is always trying to provide the most dependable results in their search engine results. And when somebody says, roof repair in Toledo or roof repair in Salt Lake City, Utah. They want to make sure that if they put your business up there, that they that you are actually working, first of all, your business isn't shut down. It's active. Yes. It's, it's recent posts. Right. It's active and that it's dependable in terms of quality. If people are leaving a bunch of one star reviews, on your business, and we'll talk about, about that more later. Most definitely. Uh, if people are leaving predominantly negative feedback on your Google reviews, they're not going to rank you up there at the top of search results. Um, however, there are some things, some things that you can do to get the most out of your Google reviews. Yes. Uh, I would say, and really it just comes down to if you want them, ask for them. For sure. The, it seems like something that's kind of obvious, mm -hmm. but the problem with the matter is sometimes we forget to ask for reviews when we're on the job site. So mm -hmm. you just, once you finish a job, say, hey, super glad I could fix that roof for you. If you could, it really helps our business out. If you go to Google, mm -hmm. just leave us a review, five stars, whatever, and just tell us how we did. Let everybody know. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some automated tools that can help you out with this if mm -hmm. you have a hard time remembering to ask for them. Um, for instance, we have a tool, uh, it used to be called Righteous Reviews, but it's recently been changed to Brand Review. Br brand Review, a uh, new brand there. Uh, mm -hmm. It can, you can use it to check in at a job site after you've completed a task, take photos of the project, and uh, one of the perkier 
perks. Perkier perks? <laughs> the perkier perks <laughs> of it is that you can automatically send a request for review via text or the client's email. And they'll receive that, has links of the places you would like them to leave a review. Mm -hmm. And considering this is a hundreds to thousands of dollars uh, financial decision for them, if they're happy with your services, they'll be more than happy to go ahead and click on that link and fill out the review. Not to harp on brand review too much, but something you did forget. It also does location tagging, so oh, yeah. geo tagging for you. It doesn't just say, I did a new roof. It says, I did a new roof in Salt Lake City, yeah. or Fort Worth. Within like a couple of blocks too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that ties into that question, are Google reviews good for SEO? Yes. Um, <laughs> this particular element uh, geotags the review and links it to your website. And that's just a fancy way of saying it shows Google where the review came from, mm -hmm. um, which lets Google know, hey, they're being active in this area. They did this particular project, this type of service at this time. And so when somebody else does a search that's related to that, they are a high quality candidate for our top tier local map packs, you know, front page rankings. And that is a huge boost to traffic, huge boost for lead potential for your business. So yeah, that's a great reason to use brand review, but that's, a, uh, that's another conversation. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and transition into our second topic here, and that's how to handle negative feedback. Uh, now, negative Google reviews can be an, an, a very intimidating challenge for roofers. Um, absolutely no one wants a negative review. Yeah. It's totally understandable, but it's a fact of life. Sometimes it does happen. Yeah, and I think it's something compared to many other aspects of SEO, roofers understand better than any of the other aspects that reviews are so important for your business. You know, yeah. do people actually choose it? Do, can people trust your business? And when somebody, you know, who's particularly cranky goes and leaves a one-star review um, for whatever reason, it can be a serious discouragement. So people will ask us, mm -hmm. will Google remove uh, negative reviews? And um, unfortunately, no. no. In most cases. No. They do review reviews, for lack of better terms, mm -hmm. um, for a small period of time before they go active. And even then, they go through. You can always contest it. But basically, they're just going to leave it as is. Yeah. Because it's an opinion of a, pros of a past client. Now, I will say this. Um, nobody should be able to cuss out your business or something like that or oh, leave no. a racial slur. And if they do do that, you can flag that review. Yes. Uh, and those are ones that Google may actually review because they don't, they don't tolerate that as best as they can. No. Yeah. Now, we have um, this next couple of questions are kind of answered by the same uh, solution. Yeah. Can Google reviews be deleted? And can Google reviews be changed? The answer is uh, no, not really. No. Um, the only person who can adjust Google reviews are the people who left them. Right. Now, oh, I was saying, yeah, right. go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's the clients, the clients who go and mm -hmm. say, oh, one star, they took two months to fix my roof. Only they can go back behind themselves and say, uh, delete, uh, change. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some things you can do, though, as a business. Yeah, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, one of them is very easy, and that's just carry on business as usual mm -hmm. and collect, continue collecting positive reviews to dwarf the negative ones that pop up. Right, totally outweigh the bad. Yeah. Now, if you haven't done a lot of, you haven't put in a lot of effort to collect reviews, and let's say you only have five, and one of those is a recently left one star, you might be freaking out and thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I just, my score just got tanked because of one negative review. We've had people come to us and be like, should I, you know, restart my online profile? Should I get a new, new domain? And the answer is, 
No. No. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> um, first don't, of all, oh, don't God. panic. Don't panic. Yes. You can um, easily dwarf those by just continuing to get positive feedback. And like we mentioned before, asking people, especially happy clients, right. for those reviews. You will be amazed how quickly that one star review can fade away once you've gotten 20 additional reviews and it's just a little blip on the map. Right, now in certain circumstances, you might look at that one star review and go, man, that's not fair. Nobody knows my side of the story. I don't know why this client is feeling this way. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, another thing you can always do is reach out to that person. That's a good point. Hey, I'm so sorry you feel this way. Our intention is always to provide great service to you. We only want you to be happy with what we've done. So Mm -hmm. what can I do? What happened in this situation so that we can better our policies in the future? Mm -hmm. Just make them feel like they actually have a voice. Mm -hmm. And possibly you can backtrack and go to the site and try to improve that for them. Now, um, it is very important that if you're going to interact with customers, which you should, um, Mm -hmm. whenever they leave you a negative review, you need to make sure that you're ready to handle it properly. Otherwise, you could potentially make the situation worse. Right. So, handling it properly looks like this. First of all, you leave a message on the review, on the review page itself, like Amberlynn described, hey, we we're sorry to hear about that. We strive for good service uh, and we want to try to make things right if possible. Would you please contact us to off of the site? Call us, um, email us here uh, with a description of what went wrong mm-hmm. or leave or contact our customer service person at this number. That makes sure that if you did something wrong and you really do need to fix things, that it doesn't pop up on your reviews. Um, now, If you've managed to get that lingo right and you've been very courteous and you've actually followed through and made things right to the best of your ability, you may be able to convince that particular customer to either change or delete their rating. Right, which would be super great. Mm -hmm. You should never, again, you should be as courteous as possible, never threaten or be um, rude to a customer because that just, again, it exasperates things. Right. Um, but if you've done a great job of handling the situation, you can say, hey, if you feel comfortable with doing so, reviews mean so much to our business, um, would you consider either deleting the review or increasing it to uh, maybe three stars or four stars? We would really appreciate that. We've seen situations where people were so impressed with the level of customer service Mm -hmm. that they changed a one-star review um, to a five-star review. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's just a little bit of courtesy. And just trying to make the situation right for one person can make that much of an impact. Yeah. Now, if you're thinking inside your head, oh, that's not really worth the effort, um, you would be amazed by how much um, going after the one that got away, so to speak, (laughs) and um, taking the effort to provide excellent customer service. It's amazing how people will respond positively and will say, hey, they had a negative experience, but they did their best to make it right. I know that if I choose their services, let's say for the first time, that they will follow through no matter what to provide me good service. So you've gone through all the trouble of changing that one star into a five star, or you have a five star that you're super proud of. Mm -hmm. It can be super frustrating, and I've seen it sometimes, where the review won't pop up. So Mm. why would a Google review not pop up? You know, there's actually a couple of reasons why a Google review might disappear off of your profile. Some of them are you know, minor technical glitches on Google's side, yeah. and other of them, other ones could be indicative of a serious problem with your GMB account. So let's um, let's start with the nuclear ones. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> um, DEFCON one, so to speak. Okay. Um, so you've accidentally, or Lord forbid, intentionally, uh, done something that violates uh, Google standards. Uh, when it comes to their GMB stuff. Yeah, it can happen. They update things so often. Yeah. 
Um, let's say, actually, there's a great example of this. Okay. Uh, instead of explaining it, I'll give a story. Uh, we had a client who actually he knew how valuable Google reviews are. Good to know. And he wanted to encourage clients to leave them as often as um, as often as possible whenever he provided them service. Right. Now, he didn't go and ask for fake reviews. He didn't go and threaten people or um, try to buy reviews off of some place. He simply offered Starbucks gift cards to everybody um, who would leave a review. Yeah, that doesn't sound bad. Yeah. Now, um, on you know, off the top, you know, it might not seem like a, a terrible thing to do. However, um, when Google heard about it, they viewed it as uh, incentivizing people to leave reviews. Oh. Now, also since you know people like the Starbucks gift card, they might think, oh well, I really like this person for doing this. Maybe this four star review can be a five star review right. instead. It kind of disrupts the review process. And uh, Google sees it as, um, as Jason puts it, uh, payola. Oh, no. Um, and they suspended the entire GMB account. Um, and this ties back into Google reviews, making all of their reviews disappear overnight. All of, it? All of their reviews. I, I want to say they had hundreds of reviews, um, but all of their reviews disappeared overnight. Now, oh they came to us, this was before they were a client, and asked if we could help them, and we said we would do our best. And when they told us about it, um, uh, when we finally figured out that that was what, was, what had happened, yeah. um, we did our best to get them reinstated. And just to let you know how serious this was, um, they had lost their GMB profile, I think, for a long time. That is not um, a situation you want to be in. They were pulling in millions of dollars uh, in revenue every year, and when they lost their GMB profile, even though it was limited, mm -hmm. and they had to start over for a lot of that, they lost two thirds of their revenue. Oh my God! And they were actually having to lay people off um, because they weren't pulling in as much as many leads as they used to. Their their local their ability to rank locally was just shot for months. I can imagine. That's horrifying. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sad story with a slightly happy ending. We managed to get back, I think, a good number of their reviews, um, and we got their GMB reinstated. But the damage had been done, and it, it took a long time for us to to get them back up to that level. Yeah. Uh, because that's just a, that's a steep hill to climb back up. For sure. Anyway. That was a long story <laughs> to go to tell you. It was a scary you, story. Um, people ask, ask us, can Google reviews be bought? The answer is yes, but don't you dare do it. No. <laughs> because it's so dangerous for your business. Uh, and we don't want that to happen to you. Um, now, there are a couple of simpler and less uh, explosive reasons why your GMB stuff might disappear. Yeah. Um, Maybe it happens to look like a fake review. Oh, that does happen. And uh, people just aren't as descriptive with when they leave it. And Google's like, I think that's a fake review. Uh, Google makes mistakes. And sometimes people can stand to be a little bit more descriptive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that can happen. And, you know, sometimes just a glitch, GMB glitches happen every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, there was a period. Uh, a couple months ago where they were updating it on a bi-weekly basis or something like that. And for a bit, we had GMB stuff disappear on our internal sites. And we're like, oh gosh, did we do something wrong? And when it just came back by itself, we we're like, oh, it's, it's a Google glitch. <sighs> That's terrifying though. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So if it goes away for a little bit and it doesn't reappear um, for months, that, that's probably indicative of a more serious issue. Yeah. Otherwise, it could just be a glitch. Um, but that, that leads really well into more of this third section here, which is uh, fake reviews. Yes. And Google reviews, they can be fake. They can be. And fake reviews has been a very disruptive factor 
in, um, in online marketing recently, especially yeah. with Amazon, if you think about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, people are having a harder time trusting reviews, uh, especially companies with glowing reputations, like five-star companies. People are thinking, did they, did they pay for some of those five stars? Um, how can a company have this many five stars? They start to doubt, which is, which is a shame if you're really providing that level of service. Um, but on the other hand, um, if you get a three-star review, two-star review, or even a four-star review, it's, that might actually be better for you than you realize. It's actually healthy nowadays to not have a pure five-star rating. Right, because it does look like you did get a valid rating at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in summary for that little bit there, <laughs> Google reviews, yes, they can be bought, they can be faked, um, and they can be, these fake reviews can be extremely dis destructive. Um, which Very is, detrimental. Yes, which is why, uh, you, and you might even think, okay, it's okay to have people that I know uh, just leave reviews, maybe have your mother-in-law say, hey, these people provide great roofing services, which is technically true, but they're not a client. Don't have Aunt Sheila give you a review. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Aunt Sheila. Especially Aunt Sheila. Um, so steer clear of fake, misleading, or any sort of incentivized reviews because that can hurt you more than help you. Right. So we've covered how they work, mm -hmm. how to handle negative ones, and how to steer clear of fake ones. For sure. Amberlynn, if you had one thing that you wanted our roofing clients to take away, or prospective clients, mm -hmm. what would you want them to remember? Um, if I had anything I wanted you to remember, it's it's always two things, and Madison always leaves me down to one. <laughs> no, um, the first thing is always remember to ask because there's no harm in asking for a review, mm -hmm. and don't panic. Don't panic if you get a negative. Just you know what's best for your company. Either talk it out or go ahead and say, I'll get more, more better ones later. Mm -hmm. It's fine. And uh, here's something. Here's a good takeaway. It's actually something we haven't mentioned yet. Uh-oh. Uh, we've talked a lot about Google reviews here, and while they are a significant ranking factor, especially for local search, they're not the only one. There's different aspects of website optimization, your, your keyword strategy, for instance, mm -hmm. writing how you write your service pages. Please do not leave a bullet list of your services on your homepage and call it quits. That Don't does do not that. work, and you will end up on the back pages of Google, which means no traffic. So don't do it. We always say content is king for a reason. Yes, yes, all, all the Moz people and everybody else yes. will say it. We all agree because it's very important to actually write about the services that you provide, to fill out your GMB profile and as best as you can, and heck, write a blog every once in a while. That's important too. Because reviews are just a part of your overall online presence and strategy. That's a good point. They're just one segment of SEO. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening in. Hopefully this has been instructive and informative uh, on Google reviews. If you ever have any questions, feel free to, uh, to call us uh, at the number listed on the video. Mm -hmm. uh, or you, know, you can leave a, a comment at the, below the video. We'll talk to you next time, and uh, thanks for listening again. Bye.